scared of inflation? And whose interests are served when we don't have high inflation? Okay. And then what can the Fed do to bring down unemployment? Wow. Um, so this is a... I have to say, this is one of those cases where I, I probably suffer a little bit from what I usually manage to avoid, which is the, the pundit's disease of, of uh, being too close to the people that you should be bashing. Because uh, uh, Ben Bernanke was, uh, was the, before being, you know, he was, he was actually chairman of the economics department at Princeton before being demoted to his current position. Um, and, uh, um, uh, and, uh, so what's going on there? Um, I think it's not, it, it's not in there, in the case of the Fed, it's not the, the kind of rawness that you're seeing. It's not like the, the Koch brothers are holding secret meetings with the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, right? It, it, but it's more a question of, of who you hang out with. It is uh, um, sort of the, the nature of the beast, unless you fight it really hard, which, which the current Fed management is not doing, is that you are going to spend a lot more time hanging out with, with, uh, with Wall Street, with uh, basically with, with the creditors, if you like. Uh, than, than you will with, 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 with workers, you know, unemployed workers do not often attend meetings of, of, uh, of the Federal Reserve. And so <laughs> there is this natural bias to be deathly afraid of anything that, that is seen as, as hurting um, bondholders, anything that's seen as hurting creditor interests. I think that's part of it. Coupled with, there is a pretty strong, I mean, for being a central banker, what you're, what you're raised to do is to learn that you're supposed to be tough and hard. That famously, you're supposed to take the take take the take away the punch bowl just as the party is really getting going, and that unfortunately translates um, into a set mindset where you take away the punch bowl even though there was no party to begin with. Um, and uh, and and sometimes you have to go even beyond. And so I. So, you know, like our, our, our depression now is not as bad as the Great Depression. The Federal Reserve is not as bad as the European Central Bank. You know, again, one of those great, uh, not, not, not a very encouraging thing. Uh, but there's a phrase, I, I actually have to find out who's responsible for it. Uh, the phrase was sadomonetarism. Uh, this, uh, this sort of sense that, it, that, that you're doing your job right if you're inflicting pain. So I think all of that's going on. But it, and, and right now it's, it's becoming something very strange going on because Literally, they're not making sense at the at the Fed. They um, they're actually saying it's not just Ben, who's uh, so I do know these people, right? It's not just Ben. It's Janet Yellen, right? who's who's the deputy and and uh, who is uh, who who I, I like a lot. And um, and they're simultaneously saying, well, there's more things we could do, but we're not ready to do them. But the economy is in terrible shape, and we're gonna—we're not even going to hit our inflation target. Inflation is going to be below our inflation target, and of course, unemployment is way above what it should be. But for some reason, we're not going to do anything. And and something is going on, which I think is this mixture of, of class interests, uh, sort of, but in, in a kind of subtle way, you know, absorbed by by the uh, by by the well, uh, absorbed by the Borg uh, and assimilated by the Borg. Uh, uh, turns out that when I put that in my article about Ben Bernanke, the Times Magazine editors didn't know what that meant, so I had to include an explanation. Didn't anyway, you know what class interests meant? No, well, that too. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't know what assimilated by the board meant either. Um, but, um, but the, the um, um, and, and then this just general, so the point is there, now it's not easy. One of the things that we did, we made a, we went through a long stretch of believing that technocrats at the Fed could always do what was necessary to rescue the economy, um, which was wrong. It turns out that when you have a really, really severe crisis like what we've got now, monetary policy is not enough. You need the government to step in with spending as well. But that doesn't mean that there's nothing you can do, and the Fed could be doing a lot more, and in particular, the Fed could be signaling very clearly that it will not start raising rates at the first hint that you know, the labor market might actually be strong enough to generate some wage increases, which is what it's doing right now. So there's a, a sort of a major cognitive problem that we face as progressives trying to explain why it is that the economy is uh, performing the way it is, why it is that Americans are suffering, and who's responsible. And I think one of the major problems is that the American people and most people around the globe, but more here in this country, don't see the economy as something that people <coughs> are controlling and setting. 
people view the economy as something like the weather, a sort of set of natural forces that are impersonal, that you have to sort of batten down the hatches when sort of an economic storm rolls in. And then there's not very much uh, that people have done to put us in this position, and there isn't very much that we collectively or that the government can do to get us out of it. So that's sort of one of those sort of deep problems that we face, and it feels like all of the solutions that we would be advocating require getting over that hump. So Erica, how is it that when you are trying to advocate for progressive economic solutions, you deal with that core problem? So I, um, what I try to think of is you're telling a story, okay, and any story has a set of plot points. And so some plot points are naturally existing and then some plot points you need to create for yourself. But if you think of, you know, the unemployment figures come out, the inflation numbers come out, blah, 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 all of these are plot points at which time you have another opportunity to tell a piece of the story. And I always talk to my team about needing to know you know, we want to know what we're doing, and then what we're really doing, and then what we're really, really doing. So when you look at the Patriotic Millionaires campaign, for example, if you raise taxes on millionaires, great, you know, but it doesn't solve all of the problem. But what we've done with that is we've inserted the word patriotic into the discussion around taxes. So if you think about the government as a company, which everybody is obsessed with doing, but any, there's not a CEO on the planet who would take the job if they had a hundred people who could vote veto every decision they made. Okay, so that's just on the company point. But, um, you know, if you look at these as plot points, what you want to do is understand those levels underneath that you're trying to do. And one of the issues with, you know, financial reform, which was impossible to message, is that when people hear the words derivatives, they fall asleep, right? I mean, these things that you, it's hard, complex ideas to get your mind around, except that it really isn't. Because it's pretty simple, in my opinion. A bunch of rich, privileged guys stole all our money. I mean, that's what it comes down to. And, and I know it's more complicated, but I don't, I don't have the, the disadvantage of being close to Ben Bernanke. And, um, <laughs> no, yeah. And so, and I mean, this is where, you know, this is where I think it's important for lots of people to play different roles. So if y'all will get out your telephones and just plug in I mean, our pitch this week is if you give us five minutes a day, we can help move this along. So every issue you care about, environment, Social Security, Medicare, all of these, if you get out your phone and just put in the following number, it's 202-452-2955. 202-452-2955. That's Ben Bernanke's phone number at the oh. Fed. Chase has been walking around since the financial crisis, acting like he's smarter than everybody else, and if only people did what he did, they wouldn't have lost all their money in the financial crisis. Well, then two weeks ago, he lost $3 billion in a single trade. Yeah. So guess what? You don't know what you're doing anyway. <laughs> you know? I mean, so this is the thing. So he shouldn't be on the board of the New York Fed, okay? He shouldn't be on the board of the New York Fed. End of story. And is that going to solve everything? Of course it's not going to solve everything, but what it does is it's a little plot point in people's heads. It's a death by a thousand cuts. You know, you take those moments to take down the power structures that are standing in the way of good progressive policy. And you take them down one by one systematically and then when you have big opportunities, you grab those big opportunities but you're, you've set yourself up to take that victory. So this question is from... So you all need to use the number.